the slide. Thanks, Peter. And a uh, very nice uh, video, uh, Chris, and if you can bring up the slides. Pleasure to talk about it. And uh, I realize uh, we're close to the, uh, to the break, and I'm not going to bombard you with uh, data. I just want to place a few comments, and uh, if we can get rolling on the slides, uh, we'll get going. The first comment is about uh, uh, the uh, term colorectal cancer. I think that's a term that we need to move away from. We all know that uh, colonic cancer and rectal cancer are very different entities. Uh, they have a different biological behavior. Dr. Schlechter clearly showed that uh, the anatomy is very different. So I think it's fine to talk about colorectal surgeons, but I don't think it's fine to talk about colorectal cancer. Uh, I can do this whole talk without slides, as a matter of fact, but maybe it uh, gets a little boring. So if we could bring them up, uh, that would be great. And um, any, any luck there. So that, that was the first comment. And then um, can we uh, problem with the slides? Or? Thank you. There we are. Let's roll. So I will speak uh, separately about colonic cancer and about rectal cancer and address uh, cancer survival, of course, and uh, short-term outcomes and uh, long-term outcomes. The, starting with colectomy for cancer, laparoscopic colectomy for cancer, the, uh, the godfather was uh, Moises Jacobs, and uh, I had the privilege in the early 90s to have dinner with him, together with Barry Salke and Jürgen Brenner. We're all laughing, we're all smiling, because uh, we uh, predicted uh, that a major revolution uh, was coming, and I just learned it was called the Cuban Revolution, and that the Cuban Revolution would roll across the world. And uh, it didn't. Uh, laparoscopic surgery did not take over colorectal uh, surgery as uh, rapidly as we expected. And why did it not? Because of the uh, reports on the port side metastases. So mostly case reports uh, appeared in 1993 and 1994 in the, in the literature, and less than 100 patients with port side metastases after laparoscopic surgery for colonic cancer were published. But they had a devastating effect. It truly halted the, the progress of uh, laparoscopic uh, surgery for colonic cancer. And uh, it's interesting because uh, we all know that uh, many patients uh, uh, sustained a uh, bowel duct injury during laparoscopic colostectomy, and uh, far more than 100 patients have been affected by bowel duct injury. I think thousands of patients have died from bowel duct injuries, and the rate is still somewhat higher, and we try to be, remain silent about that, but we know it's not true. Um, so that has not affected the, uh, the uh, acceptation of laparoscopic cholestectomy. Now, more than 90% of all uh, gallbladder surgery is done laparoscopically, and still less than 10% of all uh, surgery for colonic cancer is done laparoscopically, with a few exceptions there. So interesting. So interesting to ponder about it when you sit on the plane on the way back. So I want to talk about four trials, which I think are the most important trials. Uh, the Barcelona trial, which uh, was a single center trial, COST trial, North American trial, the CLASSIC trial, trial conducted in Britain, and the COLOR trial, a European trial. And I want to point out to you that those trials started in the early 90s, and Antonio Lacy in Barcelona was the first. So the results that we're seeing now are the results of surgeries performed in the 90s, and some of them in the early 2000s. So more than 15 years ago. So these are, as a matter of fact, historical data. And it's unavoidable if you look at follow-up, but it's very important to keep that in mind. So in the early 90s, uh, we were very early in our learning curve. Uh, we didn't know anything about medial to lateral at uh, that point in time. The numbers uh, of patients uh, were small. So all the trials had a very clear learning curve. So one needs to realize that. There was no structure trainer, training. And uh, the technology was developing. And the, the images were terrible in the beginning. But we were just, we were just doing the surgery. And um, uh, it is also shown by the number of cases per center. Uh, you can see that those numbers are relatively low, with the exception of Barcelona, which was a, a single center study, 219 patients. And what uh, you can also tell from this slide is the impact of volume. And to no surprise, uh, the, the higher the volume, the lower the conversion rate. And the conversion rate of 11% in Barcelona is an excellent conversion rate. But in the beginning, it was as high as 25%. Why is that so important, conversion rate? Well, for this reason. 
these trials had all the same principle, and the principle was an intention to treat analysis. And I don't want to bore you with all the statistical uh, ins and outs, but uh, you need to know a few things about it. What does it mean, int intention to treat analysis, is that the converted patients, converted from laparoscopic to open surgery, remain in the laparoscopic arm. So if the conversion rate is high, that dilutes the benefits of laparoscopic surgery. Another comment that I want to make is that almost half of the conversions are done in patients with large invasive cancers. For instance, in the, in the color trial, 43% of all the conversions uh, took place uh, because there was a T4 cancer. And uh, in the color trial, only 4% of all patients had preoperative abdominal CT or MRI. So what also has happened over the past 15 years, and we hardly have, no have noticed it, is that the, the workup, the diagnostic process for a patient with colonic cancer has changed tremendously. In the 90s, it was colonoscopy and barium enema, and I think very few patients right now undergo laparoscopic surgery for colonic cancer without a CT. One can even wonder if we should, no, should not do a CT in each and every patient undergoing a laparoscopic procedure, but that's a discussion for another time. So uh, let's look at the uh, cancer survival. Uh, the most interesting study uh, remains a study uh, published by, by Antonio Lacey in The Lancet in 2002, and Antonio reported an improved survival after laparoscopic surgery for a lymph node positive disease, so stage three disease. This result has not been uh, replicated, but there are some trends which point to the same uh, phenomenon. These are the results of the uh, color trial uh, published earlier this year in the Lancet Oncology. Uh, the short summary, no difference between laparoscopic and open colectomy in terms of uh, disease-free survival. So what does that mean, no difference, no clinically significant difference? Well, all these trials are, in essence, non-inferiority trials. What does that mean? Well, an inferiority, non-inferiority trial is a trial which is trying to show, in this instance, that laparoscopic colectomy is no worse than open colectomy. So in the color trial, we had 1,248 patients, and the confidence interval for the difference was from minus 3.2 to plus 7.2. Well, that means that in the worst-case scenario, the three-year survival after laparoscopic colectomy is 7.2% less than after open colectomy. The flip side of that is that laparoscopic surgery uh, could have a survival 3.2% better than open colectomy. So the confidence interval is important if you're reading the literature. So to overcome the uh, low numbers of patients, uh, we got together with the principal investigators of the Barcelona, the COST trial, the classic trial, and the color trial in the early 2000s, and we pooled all those patients. And I'm um, still very surprised that we uh, managed to agree. So there was a very important transatlantic uh, agreement. And we published that in the archives of surgery, and uh, uh, that showed we have 1,765 patients, so that's the largest number ever studied, that there was absolutely no difference between a laparoscopic and open colectomy, that the confidence interval is very narrow, so it's varied from minus 5 to plus 4%, and that is considered by most as a clinically acceptable difference. So I think all these studies have together shown that uh, laparoscopic uh, colectomy for cancer is oncologically safe. What about the cancer recurrence in the abdominal wall? Why did we see so many in the beginning? Well, simply because we're, we didn't know how to do it. We didn't protect the extraction site. Uh, we touched the tumor. We didn't localize the tumor well uh, prior to surgery. We didn't tattoo all the tumors uh, prior to surgery. And um, in the trials, the uh, incidence of cancer recurrence in the abdominal wall is less than 2%. There's absolutely no difference between the laparoscopic and the open arm. Short-term outcomes, uh, everybody knows that less pain, earlier return of bowel function, shorter hospital stay, do realize that these trials were done at a time that we still prepped the bowel and that we didn't use fast-track protocols. So the landscape has already changed. And what's very interesting uh, is, uh, are the long-term outcomes, and I think this could be the biggest benefit of laparoscopic surgery, reducing the likelihood for adhesive small bowel obstruction and the, uh, reducing the incidence of incisional hernias. And that's a study that we're conducting with the Color 1 study group right now. So 
Laparoscopic colectomy for cancer, safe. Safe when it's a T1, T2, or T3 tumor. If it's a T4 cancer, open surgery. Improved short-term outcomes, and we need to learn more about the long-term advantages. So last year was a year of celebration for surgery for rectal cancer because that was one century after Sir Ernest William Miles in London performed the first uh, abdominal perineal resection for rectal cancer. Lots has happened uh, over the, that time, and uh, Chris Selector already spoke to it. I want to point out that TME was introduced in 1978, you know, almost uh, 30 years ago. But we know that TME has not been implemented across the board. So it takes at least a generation, or a surgeon's generation, to implement a new technique. So the first uh, laparoscopic TME was again done by Moises Jacobs and by Joël Roy in, uh, in France. And the only uh, large trial which has been published so far was the classic trial, and we started the Color 2 trial in 2003, which has uh, randomized right now almost 900 patients. So it's difficult. Dr. Selecta already pointed that out, and even very experienced, very skilled surgeons like Maria Marino, Eric Poulin, high conversion rates. Difficult due to the narrow pelvis, distal transection can be very demanding. And the, the conversion rate in the classic trial was as high as 34%. Short-term outcomes, an analogy to uh, laparoscopic colectomy for cancer, early return of bowel functions, shorter hospital stay. There was some concern uh, uttered in the uh, early 2000s uh, uh, that uh, sexual dysfunction would be more prevalent after laparoscopic surgery, but that was not shown in the classic trial. Positive circumferential resection margins, we just learned from Dr. Schlechter that is the most important parameter when we look at uh, uh, the proper cancer operation. Classic uh, data were published in The Lancet in 2005. It was suggested in that uh, manuscript that uh, the, uh, the rate of positive uh, circumfer circumferential resection margins was higher after laparoscopic anterior resection than after open anterior resection. You may notice that the p-value is 0.19, so that is not a difference, and so it was rectified in a later issue, but still a concern, 12%. The best way to look at that is uh, whether um, there was a, recurrence, a higher recurrence rate. So what about the three-year local recurrence rates uh, after laparoscopic or open anterior resection? Similar. So apparently that apparent difference in a higher rate of certain preferential resection margin did not uh, result in a higher recurrence rate. Did also not result in a difference in the three-year disease-free uh, survival. Of note, the, the three-year disease-free survival after laparoscopic resection of Jukes A rectal cancers seemed to be somewhat better. And I'm saying seemed because there was no statistical significance of 0.08. Think back to uh, Antonio Lacey's trial. So maybe laparoscopic surgery is better for cancer. So what we can say now, short-term outcomes are better. Uh, in terms of cancer outcomes, we cannot rely on one trial. We need more trials. Uh, uh, in the U.S., uh, a trial just uh, took off uh, about a year ago. I think we need to enroll our patients uh, with rectal cancer undergoing laparoscopic surgery in trials or registries, and we don't know enough about the long-term advantages as of yet. Brings me to the conclusion, and uh, I will attempt to uh, ask the uh, question that uh, Peter uh, asked. Are the results a reality? No, the, resu the results are inferior to the current reality. I think we're doing already a better job. Patients are experiencing better outcomes than the results shown in the trials. We need to realize that we do a better job uh, selecting the patients, uh, we, we use CT scans and MRI scans much more frequently, and I think that's a good thing. Uh, most of us have discontinued uh, using bowel prep. Uh, our surgical technique has uh, improved uh, significantly. The image has improved tremendously with high definition. Uh, more eff effective tissue sealing and stapling, the fast track postoperative uh, protocols will also benefit the postoperative course, and a structured training now of surgical teams. 
uh, quality improvement is an ongoing process. It's, uh, and uh, in the, the same vein, the outcomes of laparoscopic colorectal surgery will continue to improve. Thank you very much.